Good afternoon. Thanks for tuning in to Dear Side Pursuit. Today's topic is a beginner's guide to dating after a breakup. Now, a lot of people are really nervous about what to do if they've been in a relationship for a long time and now maybe 10, 15 years later, even five years later, they're now learning how to date all over again because many things have changed. But the first thing that I advise you to make sure is that you are ready to date because the last thing you want to do is bring emotional baggage from your ex into a new situation. And I'm not even talking about a relationship down the road. I'm talking about just dating because a lot of times people don't understand when they're out on a date, how much they do talk about their ex. And these are people who are usually either not ready because it's kind of a fresh breakup or maybe they're still in love with their ex or they're angry at their ex. So this becomes a topic of conversation and takes over the whole foundation of the first or second date. So please make sure that before you even go out dating again, that you have a clear mind and that you are ready to meet somebody. And another thing, revenge dating is quite popular because everyone wants to get over their ex and they figure if they have somebody else in the mix, it will clear their mind. But this doesn't always happen because you're bringing somebody else into the mix, which is not fair to them because if you're just going to try and make an impact and get your ex's attention, I'm doing okay, look at me, it's going to be a problem for the per people that you're dating or if you end up in a relationship with somebody too quickly. Another thing that I suggest to people is do not sleep with somebody too quickly when you're out of a breakup you need to have a clear head and when you become sexually involved with somebody there's a powerful chemistry that takes over it takes away your common sense and it can make you do things that maybe are out of character for you maybe you're not ready to go there and if you do all of a sudden you start conjuring up all these feelings about your ex because maybe it doesn't compare or all sorts of things come into play here when you're not ready to be intimate with somebody. So if you are dating and you feel pressured to have sex with somebody, remove yourself from it. If they don't want to hang around and wait for a little bit longer, well, that's their prerogative, but it's also your choice not to have to be there with somebody in an intimate way when you're not ready. This can screw you up more than anything, because especially for women, because we are emotional creatures for the most part and when intimacy and romance comes into our lives it makes us fall a little bit faster before you decide that you're ready to date it's really a good idea to grieve your relationship take some time to cry about it take some time to just get over what happened but also it take time to own your part in it because you allowed things to go on whatever transpired between the two of you and there's a reason that your relationship ended. And relationships are a two-way street for the most part. So both people play a part in why the demise of a partnership happens. And the clearer you are about what happened in your, in your past relationship, the sooner you're ready to move on to find somebody that you're better suited for because you're owning stuff. You're, you're paying attention to the life lessons that you're supposed to learn in every relationship that you end up in. So we've talked about what you should think about before you even start dating again. So let's talk about what your options are. Well, the first one for most people today is online dating. But not everybody likes that, Every, especially when you're just coming out of something because you don't really know what to do. So if you do want to try and venture into this, I really suggest that you have a friend or somebody that can help you understand the dynamics of what's involved in online dating, the safety issues, um, the best sites to, to look into. Maybe you're a bit older, there's a better site for you. Maybe you're younger and you just want to have some fun for a little while. There's all sorts of dating sites out there. So do your homework and ask for help because online dating can be a really scary place. There's lots of catfishers out there. There's lots of people who aren't sincere. There are a few dating sites that stand out a little bit more, but that's something that you have to, to look into for yourself. But Zeus has got a fairly decent reputation, Match.com, 
elite singles. There's some for older people as well, silver singles, I think it's called. Just do your homework before you put yourself on there and really, really clearly understand what it is you're looking for and check out people's profiles, their photos. Make sure you're really looking at each thing. It's going to take a while. It's, it's pretty much a full-time job, but it's okay. It's worth it. There's many good stories about people who meet somebody online dating. The one thing I caution you about in any dating platform that you might be on or experimenting with, if you're finding that you're texting and texting and texting somebody and they're never wanting to meet up with you, they make excuses about why they can't meet up with you, I suggest you move on from them. There are so many people who spend months and even a year texting somebody that they never meet. This is a big red flag. Try to date people within your own city because anytime you add long distance into the mix, that can be a nightmare. It's also a lot of work to try and get together and make everything mesh between the two of you. So when you're first starting out dating again, when, you've been, when you were in a relationship for a long time, choose avenues that are a little easier to follow. You don't want to make anything, any drama-filled scenarios happen because it's just going to confuse you even more and you're going to miss your ex because I don't need all this crap. I don't want to deal with this drama and it'll frustrate you. Also remember that you're not the only one there dating. People that are online dating or doing any other type of dating platforms, they usually have a few people that they're talking to at least. Sometimes they're seeing two or three more people. And that's okay because you have the same option. So don't worry about that, but just be prepared that they may not see you all the time. They might be too busy because they've got other things going on. So understand the difference between somebody who's unavailable because they're playing a game, they're unavailable because they've got a busy work schedule, or they're unavailable because they're playing the field. You want to know that at the end of the day, when you do find somebody that you are interested in that you have a clear path so you can both entertain having a relationship together and don't leave it too long to have the exclusive talk if you're seeing them fairly often because this is something that is important for you to know be very alert to any mixed signals or red flags you're a smart person you know when something's off your gut will tell you and the biggest thing that I find with many people, no matter how many times you exp express this to them, is they don't listen to those spidey senses, those gut instincts that are warning you there's something off. There's something a little bit jaded or maybe there's, it's just not a good fit for you. Safety is always number one. That is something that you have to always listen again to your gut if you feel any sense of fear or any kind of concern, please listen to it. Do not venture on that path with anybody that you have even the remotest feeling like this. When you're first meeting somebody, never go to their home or have them come to your home. Meet them in a public environment. That is always the situation that you should have because it takes a while to trust somebody and you've come out of a relationship. You're a little bit green in this area and people can talk the talk. And you don't want to be the one that sits there and believes everything that comes out of their mouth. So take some time away, even if they want to see you all the time, to get some clarity. So that when you see them again, you're seeing them a little bit newer each time. If you see them constantly and constantly and then you end up in the sack with them and all these things go on, you're already invested and not in a healthy way a lot of the time. Check out what social events or, or gatherings are happening in your neighborhood. Just go online and click in your city and events for the month of April, month of May, and just see what's happening because there might be some things you and a friend would like to go to and you meet more people. There's all sorts of social things you can do. There's meetup groups in your city as well. It could be a hiking group. It could be a running group. It could be just a wine night somewhere. It doesn't have to be a singles meetup group, but there will be some single people there. There will also be people that you can meet that might have a friend down the road that you will connect with. The most important thing is to get out as much as you can and have a good attitude, be friendly, be open, but be smart. Don't jump in to every little situation because you've got a bit of an attraction towards somebody. 
Make sure there's more going on than just a powerful chemistry. In closing, just understand everything valuable and worth, worthwhile in your life takes time. It takes work to find what you're looking for in your career, in your friendships, and in your personal romantic relationships. So please be careful when you're just newly dating again. Ask for guidance, ask for support. There's tons of stuff online. There's lots of coaches and therapists out there that can help you if you're stuck with something. Just understand that you are worthy of having a great partnership. And just because that one didn't work out, it just means you've grown in an opposite direction. And that can be a good thing. Thank you so much for tuning in to Dear Cyber Sue today. Please subscribe if you haven't already done so. And please leave any comments that you have for today's video. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.